From a writer director, we will now next move on to a broadcaster, media entrepreneur, entrepreneur and philanthropist. Mo Abudu is CEO of the Ebony Life Group, which includes, among other things, TV, film production companies, and a luxury and entertainment resort in Nigeria. She was hailed by CNN as Africa's queen of media. Today, she is in conversation with my moderator colleague, Wendy Mitchell. Please welcome Mo Abudu. If we can get Wendy on, I should say. There we are. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Mo. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's good Thank to see you. Thank you for joining us at Carla. Uh, we are so glad you're here. Um, Johanna gave a short introduction, but I would also like to point out that you're also called by Forbes as Africa's most successful woman and mm -hmm. by The Hollywood Reporter as one of the 25 most powerful women in global television. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Um, and I was lucky to meet you when I was doing some work in Nigeria a few years ago. And, um, you know, you've, you've also been called the Oprah of Africa, but you know what? That, that's not even correct. Well, you're, well, you're, you're, she might be the well, Mo of America, really. <laughs> All these titles. I am just poor little Mo, just Mo. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mo. You're always so down to earth as well. Um, you know, we, we thought you would just be perfect to talk here at Carla. We've already, we've only been started for half an hour and we've already heard from about eight really inspiring women. Um, we're gonna be talking a lot at Carla about carving out your own place in the world or in the industry and sort of not waiting for permission to mm. do that. And that's one thing I love about your story. You were so entrepreneurial. You started Ebony Life TV. Can you tell us about that moment and why you were confident enough to start your own yes. network? Yes, Wendy. Um, you know, I, one thing that I always say to my friends, my family, and anyone around me is that it's so important to find the things in life that you're passionate about. When you find what you're passionate about, then ultimately that translates to you finding your purpose in life. And once you've found passion and purpose, I think those are the two major items. They're the two major driving forces for success. They're the things that are going to, even when the challenges are there, even when things aren't going the way you want them to be, once there's purpose and once there's passion, I think everything else kind of falls into place. So for me, for the longest time, I've all wanted to be involved in telling our stories. I was born in England. For the longest part of growing up in the United Kingdom, you know, you're being asked sometimes the most ridiculous questions about who you are. And for a long time, I decided not to do anything about it. I am a HR consultant. I worked with ExxonMobil for many years. I got into hospitality. And I thought, if I make a leap into media, people are going to think, is she OK? which did happen, by the way, when I made the leap, they're like, is, Mo, is everything okay? Because I turned 40 at the time. So maybe was it a midlife crisis? What's going on? What's going on? But I think I finally decided to face up to what I was most passionate about. And it was what was in my heart. And it was really about telling our stories. And I believe that once you found what you are passionate about, as I said, things do fall into place. Hmm. So what was I going to do? It started with me deciding on a talk show. Now, the re that's where the title, The Oprah right, Africa, yes. came from. And so when this journey with the talk show started, um, I met with a few people in the business world in Nigeria to convince them to please support. Because in our part of the world, the only way you can get anything on television is you need sponsors. Sponsors need to find value in what you're doing. So I went around pitching this idea about this talk show. It's going to be about this. It's going to be about ordinary people doing extraordinary things, celebrating the best of Nigeria, et cetera, et cetera. It took a minute, but eventually I did get support. And the show went on to Multi-Choice, onto DSTV and ran for several years. But then I found that it gave me a platform through which I could engage with so many different types of people and tell so many different types of stories. I felt there must be more to this. And then I started thinking about launching a network. Now, again, everybody thought I was pretty bonkers. You've done a TV show, you've done a talk show, now you want to launch a network? 
And I said, yes, I do. And you know, once you put something out there, you kind of have to kind of like find a way to just, you know, make it happen. Hmm. So being a consultant, coming from a HR background, I always start with these massive presentations and, you know, sort of doing PowerPoints and you're going around and you're, again, you're looking for support that, you know, I want to do this network and these, this is the value, these are the opportunities and for all the different brands involved. And I pretty much, it took me about three to four years hmm. to get buy-in to this network because I'd never done it. I mean, I'd never done a TV channel. I'd never run anything like that, but I just sort of thought about if you can think something, you can do it. And it's, 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 it's how I end all my talk shows. And I always use those words to encourage everyone out there to say, if you can think it, you can do it. Now, what is a TV channel? A TV channel is, it's, it's, it's a schedule of programming. It's okay. So what sort of programming did I want to have on this channel? I wanted to tell our story in such a way that it had never been told before sort of focusing on this global black woman, this global black person, this global millennials that needed to have a platform. It was incredible that then, I mean, this was only 2012, it didn't exist. So we're, you know, we're finding all these gaps in these spaces and saying there wasn't a talk, there wasn't a Pan-African talk show that existed. Yeah. There wasn't a TV platform like mine that existed. So it was now, yes, you know, black stories matter. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's almost cliche to say, um, you know, we're changing the narrative. But back then, it was really difficult to get a foot in the door to say, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to launch this channel. This is how I want to make this channel happen. Um, it, it, it took a minute, like with everything. I mean, I could be here till tomorrow telling you how we got the channel started. But I thank God we did. I have an incredible team. I still have that team that we worked with. We were putting together show ideas, we were producing the shows, we were editing the shows. I mean, we literally had over a hundred people working with us from editors to those that were writing scripts to researchers. It, it, you know, it was an incredible um, opportunity that we had. And I, you know, and the memories of that will always, always be with me on how we started. Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing what you built. Um, were people ready to see a woman run a major media company? in Nigeria? Did you, was that something you had to change perceptions on? I think that, I think women were challenged globally. I mean, I, I spoke about this last week. I, I had a post on my page that I said that, you know, as black women, we face what I call double discrimination. I mean, we all know that women are discriminated against point blank, but then we also know that black women are also discriminated against. So there are two levels of, of that discrimination that we face. And Nigeria is still very much, um, the media is still driven by men in, in, in our society. So to a certain extent, I mean, you know, people will look at you and think, okay, let's see what she can do. Because I'd been in hospitality before then, I'd had some level of success, you know, in my career. So they were like, okay, let's, let's, let's see how she's going to do this. And it's almost as if some people are waiting to see, is she going to make this? Is she going to fall? Is she going to be successful? And then, you know, so, so you're under, in, in, you're under intense pressure to keep doing, to keep making sure that you can be successful because failure is no, it's not an option. It's not an option for me. So you just keep pushing. You just keep, you know, you, whatever comes, you just take it on the chin and you just get up and you say, it's another day. What do we need to do to, to you know, to keep moving on? So people, some people may have felt that, okay, is she going to make it? But they don't say it to your face, kind of behind your back. Yeah. <laughs> and with, you know, the sort of films that I've seen that you've produced have opened my eyes a different way to maybe successful businesswomen in, in, in Africa, not just in Nigeria, not being shown the same tropes as we see in Nollywood, for instance. Um, what kinds of, of voices do you want to champion right now? What are you looking for? I want to champion, of course, women is number one on my list. I want to tell stories about women. And some of these stories could be inspirational in that it's about a great woman doing great things. But it could also be a story like the most, our most recent film coming out soon, which is about human trafficking mm. and how many of our women can get caught up in that. So yes, it's definitely about championing the female cause, but within that also, it's about making sure that we can tell a range of stories from those that are very inspirational to those that are areas where we want to warn and say, these are the dangers. I think someone needs to be giving a voice and a narrative to those sorts of stories as well. But you know, Ebony Life is known every Christmas for bringing out 
a jolly, happy movie that people are going to go to the box office and watch and they're just going to be, the, oh, wow, this is wonderful. And we started that with 50, which was in 2015. And I think we met, we met then. Yes. Um, and then we went on to do the wedding party one, the wedding party two, um, then chief daddy, then your excellency. They've all been a lot of fun. Um, but within the fun, there's also a, a message in, 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 in all the films that we make, but it's, it's, you know, so we started with, with TV, then we got into film. Um, and then, as you know, we recently opened Ebony Life Place, which is a luxury and entertainment resort in Lagos, where you can actually live the experience of coming to watch a great movie or have, you know, have dinner or, or have your, you know, your intimate events and things like that. So we really want to play in that entire space of you being inspired and also living um, within that. I love that. I can't wait to come back to Lagos and you gotta come. You gotta come. at the race. Um, do you think the world uh, globally is opening up to being open to more stories from Africa, di different kinds of narratives that they might not have seen before? I cannot tell you how much the world has opened up. I mean, I had been going to MIPCOM and MIP TV probably for about 10 years. And what I love about our business is everybody's always so polite. It's always, oh yes, that's a wonderful idea. Yes, we must, here's my card, you know, and you're sending email after email, you're not getting any responses. No. So for the first four, five, six years of going to MIP, that's exactly what happened. I mean, I would leave really excited. Yes, I've met this person and I'm, something great's gonna happen. But unfortunately it didn't happen, but it happened um, in 2018 um, with Sony. As you know, we signed um, um, you know, a three scripted deal with Sony then, but what we had, to do before signing was to go back and do the work, which was about investing in IP, mm. was investing in research, was having a development team that was ready to put together these incredible story ideas that we could take to the world. Now, the thing about saying, do they want, does, does Hollywood want our stories? They do want the stories, but they want a particular type of story. They want a story that is gonna have global appeal that yeah. yes, it can be an African story, but what relevance does that have for the world and how can the world relate to those stories? Yeah. So it's, it's really about getting the format and the storytelling right. And I think that we are in a really good place now because you know, we've done the deal with Sony, we've done the deal with AMC, um, on an African you know, sci-fi series. We've done the multiple deal with Netflix as well, amongst a few others that I can't mention because you know, they, they're yet to be announced. So you know, we are getting to the point of where we're understanding the types of stories. You know, Hollywood wants scale. They want big stories. So I mean, a couple of times I've tried to sell a couple of you know, intimate stories. They're like, well, it's too intimate. It's, it's, it's not big enough. I need big. I'm like, you want big? Don't worry. I'll give you big. You know? <laughs> so yeah, they do want. So it's just to say to everyone out there that's listening today, please think big. Look for something that's going to resonate globally around the world. You know, I keep saying Africa has been so silent for so long, yet we have so much history. We have so many stories to share with the world. And this really, there's no time better than now for us to get out there and to tell these stories. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm so impressed by, yeah, these deals with Sony, with Netflix. And like you said, they might want a certain kind of story, they think. But yeah, how do you juggle that with not just the bigness, but telling stories that you think represent the Africa you want to show as well, not just what the person in LA might want to see from Africa? Absolutely. It's really about making sure that we also have the right agenda because, as I said, we're very female focused. So the first story that we sold or that we not we didn't sell it, that we have a co-production deal on with Sony is called the Dahomey Warriors. Now, this is a beautiful story about these incredible African warrior women that lived hundreds of years ago that were out there fighting on behalf of their nation. I mean, what is more inspiring than that? So, you know, they, 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 they saw that it could be big. They saw the scale within that and said, you know what, we need to do this story. So it's, 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 so for us, a lot of the focus is on um, women. It is on telling stories that are rather unusual. Some of them are on resources as well. Um, you know, the, the hunt for resources. Um, because as you know, Africa has all these resources, but what have we done with them and have we used them to the, to the best of our potential? So for us, it's really about looking at what's topical, what's relevant and saying, how can we drive this narrative to ensure that there's also a message, a message for the world and a message for us. And at the same time, not forgetting that we need to entertain our audiences. We need to excite 
our audiences at the same time. I think that's one reason you've been so successful. You realize it's not just what the creator wants, we have to think about the audience as well. Um, we, we have to start wrapping up, sadly, but I'm just curious, you know, you've done so many different things in your career, also with your philanthropy, um, you know, yeah, you have Ebony Life Place. You've got a whole place uh, that lives in addition to the media empire. So what, what are the goals for the future? Where do you go from here? What's next? I think we have such a massive slate of programs and of production to do. We're going to be tied up doing that for a long time. But I would also like to get involved with programs that help empower our women and our young girls. And I'm going to be doing a lot more of that. That is something that I'm passionate about and I must find my own time to do. I recently became a grandmother. So, you know, um, I want to spend time with my grandson and more grandkids to come. Um, and I want to just keep, you know, thinking up these incredible stories that we can share with the world. And it's so exciting when you've created something and you know you, you push it out and they're like, oh, we love this idea. There's nothing more rewarding than that, than that you're gonna get an opportunity to create something um, you know, that, people have, that people have bought into. It's, it's, it's a beautiful feeling. Wonderful. Um, and any parting words or advice? I mean, you, for the people listening to Carla, uh, we've got so many people around the world. Yes. Um, would it be to think big? It's to think big. I would say if you can think it, you can do it. Never be afraid. I think it's important to actually do the things that you are most afraid of. If you're not afraid of the dream, then it's not big enough. So when you sort of get goosebumps, like, oh my God, can I really do this? That's when you know you're on the right track. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, I think that's really wonderful advice. Mo, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really great. Uh, I feel inspired and energized. And my gosh, you're a hot grandma in addition to being a fantastic mogul. So thank you for joining, Carla. Hope we catch up soon. Thank you. Yes, and we'll go back to the studio with Johanna. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for this inspiring session. So much, so many role models already. And I have to say this content has given me goosebumps at this point. So that is apparently a, a sign that we are now on the right track.